بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم آڈینس ہوپ یو آر آل گڈ ٹوڈے ان دس ویڈیو وی آر ڈسکسنگ اے ویری امپورٹنٹ اینڈ فیمس امریکن ناول اے فیئر ویل ٹو آرمس اینڈ اٹ اٹ از رٹن بائی ارنسٹ ہیمنگ وے دا ناول از اٹ واز پبلشڈ ان 1929 اینڈ موسٹ آف دا ناول از بیسڈ آن دا ورلڈ وار فرسٹ ارنسٹ ہیمنگ وے Uh, saw the first world war with his own eyes so he described many incidents from the novel but he gave uh, novel a, a new touch a new look by adding uh, a very deep human feeling of love into it this novel is basically consisted of five books there are five books in this novel and further chapters and it is a very simple and to the point novel there are no flashbacks everything is narrated by the protagonist of the novel who is the second lieutenant in the italian army he is frederick henry and he is an ambulance driver in the first world war uh, he is fighting on the part of italy and he is a very young and energetic officer in the army this novel is a juxtaposition of love and war so how uh, there, there is the reflection of both love and war we will see in detail and in this novel there is a message of ernest hemingway uh, a farewell to guns in favor of love this is the message no more war because wars are destructive and love can overcome the destructions of war the hatred can be overcome by love that has resulted uh, in the after the world war first if we see the the novel in a single sentence so the novel is consisted of the boy gets the girl the boy wins the girl and the boy loses the girl boy here mean henry and girl here mean the heroine of the novel that is catherine bartley she is a british nurse who is working in italy in the world war first and she has a past background as well her fiance uh, was killed in the first world war and she is always uh she, she is already uh, detesting the war she does not like war uh, but she is uh, realistic when she says that war can never be dropped but in fact she hates war so they both love each other and this is uh, one of the most passionate loves in literature the the, the gradual development in their love as well so when henry was injured in the battlefield he was brought to the milan in the hospital where uh, she was working as a nurse so they passed the whole summer together and ultimately she becomes pregnant and their love it grew with the passage of time <clears throat> and they uh, declared one another as their religion as their lives so uh, the deep love uh, never allowed uh, henry to go back to the battlefield but he even <clears throat> went there but uh, because of a tragic incident uh, he fled from the battlefield and he decided to uh, return to to catherine forever there are 15 very important features of this novel which i will uh, share with you uh, in a very short way number 1 this is a chronological novel mean all the events they are in the chronological order historical order date wise time wise there is a sequence from the very first chapter of the novel till the last all the things are in that historical order the way the things they happened in the very way they are described by the narrator henry number 2 there are no flashbacks in the novel 
whatever is shown whatever is written by the writer that is in fact happening there is no recall to the past there are some reports like the death of the fiance of uh, catherine but uh, there is no such flashback okay that is only reported uh, that is only informed in the way of information that's all so in, this makes novel more realistic number 3 novel is very simple and to the point this is not a complex novel like the modern english novels of stream of consciousness uh, of henry james of virginia woolf of d h lawrence not at all this is a very simple and realistic novel everything is to the point and properly understood number 4 in this novel there is first person narrative technique where henry who is the protagonist of this novel he narrates all the incidents of his life is career in army then his love with catherine the ultimate consequences of love till her death uh, and final is uh, loneliness everything is described by him so this first person uh, narrative technique this novel is an anti war novel i will uh, give more time to this uh, theme of anti war but the novel describes the destructions of war that war gave man nothing it gave world nothing but destruction disillusionment disappointment spiritual degradation and disabilities and even the families they were destroyed the system the cultures they were destroyed so there are destructions of this war this is a passionate love story henry and catherine are so passionate in their love that they call one another as their lives okay henry is no more henry he has become catherine and catherine has become henry they are so engrossed and involved okay and they both uh, find a shelter in love from the horrors of war so this is a very passionate love story then uh, in this novel there are horrors of war the injuries the disabilities the 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 bomb blasts firings bloodshed uh, bodies are cut and blood everywhere and hate so and then there can sequences on the humans on the human civilization on the world they are there then number 8 we have the fantasies of love okay um, they decided to live forever together after the birth of the child but it was not fulfilled uh, there is a tragic death of uh, catherine and henry was left all alone there are some other fantasies uh, like they want to live uh, together but there are some other realistic things in the world some other practical things in the world which they have to face catherine has to do her duty in the hospital and uh, henry has to go back to the war but anyhow uh, the love it goes on then there is uh, a very important factor is that there is just one main plot in the novel there are uh, there is no sub plot okay one main plot so it has the unity of uh, action one main plot uh, that is love of henry and catherine the development of the relation Uh, their passion with the passage of time separation union reunion and ultimate death of catherine and uh, not the uh, end of love but the end of novel but a new start when he goes outside in the rain and thinks uh, what is his identity in the world and what is his status in the world that's very important then uh, a very important point is that uh, in 1916 uh, and to 1918 these are the three years that are covered uh, here these are the three years that are covered uh, from 1916 to 1918 then this novel is a combination of love and war that we will discuss it in detail as well and uh, this is considered as one of the best novels of uh, ernest hemingway and uh, he, he was given nobel prize of literature as well so this shows his greatness in this field when we come to the main characters of this uh, novel there are two major characters frederick henry and uh, catherine bartlett 
when we come to Frederick Henry, uh, he's, a, he's a very round character. He's an excellent example of round character. His opinions about life and war, uh, they are different uh, from the earlier part of the novel uh, as compared to the later part of the novel. Uh, he thinks that life and war, they, they, are, they are very unpleasant. That's why he seeks shelter uh, in wine and in sex. This is his routine. Uh, he is fond of prostitutes and he is also fond of wine and this he thinks will uh, give him relaxation and uh, he will escape from the horrors and this unpleasant uh, business that is called war. Then uh, when he meets uh, Catherine uh, during one of his dialogues he says let's drop the war. He wants to uh, drop the war forever, but Catherine replies that it's very hard, there is no place to drop it. It means human beings, they will be hating one another, there will be grudges, there will be uh, political, social, economical problems, and man will be fighting battles in future as well. So then, he is such a man who, is, uh, who becomes very serious in his blog. Uh, of Catherine. So he, he grows closer and closer. The more close he is, the more passionate and serious and deep is the love. So he loves truly uh, at Melon after being uh, wounded. When in the wounded condition, he saw the way Catherine was treating him uh, in a very uh, sympathetic way, uh, in a very kind way. So he won. Uh, he, she won his love. And uh, ultimately, they both had a very good relation, a very serious relation. And when um, he was dreaming to have an ideal life, when he fled away from the battlefield, that ultimately they will have great time, they will live there uh, with their baby, and there will be a new life start. But all this went in vain because uh, Catherine died while uh, giving birth to the child and she could not tolerate those pains and she died. And the baby, baby was also still born. So everything uh, was finished for Henry at that time. But he was a man to live. He was such a courageous man that even life was worth living now. And if it was not worth living, even then there is something left to understand about himself, about world, about society, etc. So, this understanding of the world, ironically, tragically, now he has to uh, do on his own. He is all alone now. He, 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 he now understands the world. But uh, there is no Catherine now. So in a very dejected uh, condition, outside in the rain, he goes and ultimately he uh, understands uh, the world. And even about fate, there are his ideas that are developed. Uh, then Henry, we have the character of uh, Catherine Barclay. She is a British lady. She is uh, a nurse by profession. And uh, now a days, she is uh, posted in Milan, Italy, in a hospital. So for the first time, she meets with Henry in the hospital. And uh, they both grow their relation with the passage of time. She is a static character. If there were some changes in her character, that already happened before the start of the novel. Especially the tragic uh, incident of the death of her fiancé uh, that changed her life, uh, that changed her view about world, about war. Uh, anyhow, when they both meet, uh, their relation it develops with the passage of time. But as compared to Henry, she is more realistic. That is why at first she refuses all the advancements of love from Henry. Um, she says that uh, you cannot uh, trap me and uh, I don't think uh, that uh, you will ever be able to uh, gain my love. So she says that you don't have to pretend that you love me. <clears throat> this was her earlier opinion. But later on she changed her mind and uh, especially when they passed the summer together in the hospital when Henry was uh, brought wounded from the battlefield. So on his request she was there to attend him to look after him, to treat him. Anyhow, with the passage of time, their love, it grew so much that they declared love as their religion. They loved so passionately one another that in one of the lines from the play, she says that I want you so much that I want to be you too. 
that I want to be Henry. Uh, this is, uh, I think, the extreme level of uh, passionate love. On the other hand, Henry replies that you are. It means that you are Henry. Already we have gained that uh, high status, rather the highest status in love. And we are the same one. So it means uh, the love, it grew with the passage of time and it reaches to its peak. Anyhow, uh, when she became pregnant and ultimately uh, they both started uh, a new life. And when Henry saw the horrors of war uh, in the very tragic incident, so he decided to uh, flee away from the battlefield uh, and to see a shelter uh, in the love of Catherine. So he comes back to her. Anyhow, uh, she is a very brave lady. So even when she was pregnant, she was uh, in the boat with uh, Henry. She was holding the umbrella all the time and she was numerous. In that way, she was trying to console herself and Henry as well. But ultimately, she saw a very tragic death. She gave birth to a stillborn child and uh, those pains she could not tolerate. And ultimately, she dies of pain. So she uh, left Henry dejected and deserted. Um, in a way, she's a, she's a symbol of hope in the play. She's a very kind-hearted lady and uh, she's practical as well. But ultimately, she saw the tragic end and her tragic end, it was the tragic end uh, of uh, Henry as well. So when we conclude, uh, there are some very important points about it. Number one, that war is uh, made by certain people but it is executed by others. What does this mean? That war is a business that is made by certain people, politicians and powerful people of the world. But on the other hand, it is executed by the army officers, by soldiers. Okay, And they have nothing to do in those political gains. So they have nothing to do in those materialistic gains. And on the other hand, who suffer from war? They are the common humans, the families of the soldiers, soldiers and their families and all the people who are directly or indirectly related with them. Then the second very important point is that war it has brought destruction to the world and it has brought hatred to the world. And Hemingway thinks that it is only true love that can overcome this hatred in the world. So this is the juxtaposition of both love and war that I introduced at the start. That on one hand is war, that is horrible that is uh, detested in every form and that brings frustration only, that brings disillusionment, isolation, disappointment. But love is a ray of hope. Love, it brings happiness, it brings uh, uh, prosperity, it brings the beauty in the world. So uh, this is the message that love can make the world beautiful, not war. When we discuss uh, this novel as an anti-war novel, this is very important uh, topic of the play. Yes, it is an anti-war novel because there are destructions of the war, there are the fears, disillusionments, disabilities, okay? And First World War, it, it shook the world. Man's uh, faith, man's beliefs, and his uh, belief in himself, in God, in life, in society. So everything was shattered. There's a character who is Henry, the protagonist. He saw the injuries and the disabilities and bombs and firings, enmities, grudges with his own eyes. Okay, so he is in a better position to tell us uh, about the destructions of war. So this makes the novel more realistic. That he's a such he's such a man who has seen war himself. So there's an autobiographical touch because Ernest Hemingway saw the First World War himself and he shared his experiences through the character of Henry, who's the first person narrator in the novel. Then after falling in the love with Catherine, for Henry it becomes very, very difficult to go back to the war and to face those horrors. That's why now he wants to escape from battlefield and he wants to have some shelter in the love of uh, Catherine and ultimately he returns. So there's a very tragic incident in the novel that during the retreat Henry shoots a sergeant who refuses the orders. Then he sees a friend uh, who was shot dead by his fellow Italian and also when he was just near 
the arrest so he uh, fled away from the battlefield he jumped down into the river and then he returned back to catherine it means this showed uh, her this showed real so this so this shows his real detest of war his hate of war anyhow he came back to uh, catherine once more okay when he returns back it means he has abandoned war battlefield and even all his uh, war friends now there is no way to return because if he returns now there is nothing but death execution so he sees that horrors of war uh, in the in the practical form uh, they are very dangerous they can bring destruction to the world anyhow later on he refuses to discuss war even he does not want to discuss war he is so disgusted he is so frustrated that he is not uh, in a mood even to discuss war he hates war but he wants to seek shelter in love of catherine so there are different soldiers and characters in this novel including henry himself that they are so frustrated by war that they want to have some time with whores and prostitutes uh, and also they drink wine so women and wine these are the two shelters from war for the time being okay they could escape from the horrors of war they could relax their mind because tomorrow again they have to fight so they were so frustrated that they were uh, seeking shelter in such things now the novel's intense love of catherine and henry it reinforces the message that we have to create a world of love not of war when we will create a love world it will make the world prosperous happy successful on the other hand if we will wage war and if we will make world horrible because of war we will gain nothing okay then um, the world will become a happy island when there, there there is love and which is true and sincere so the love of catherine and uh, henry it was a kind of ray of hope a light in the darkness okay that after such bloody wars uh, yes love can overcome such feelings of hatred destructions so this was the message of ernest hemingway at the end of the novel that's all for today's videos uh, we will meet uh, next video inshallah thank you so much allah hafiz